Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Sarah, and this is a demonstration of the water-based products that I use. They are not all watercolor products, but they are water-based products. And um, I have eight different products, and I'd like to kind of show you those different things and how you can use them and kind of um, just an overall... This is not to compare them because there really is no comparison because they are different mediums. It's more of a personal preference. So I'm just going to show you what you can do with them and the different types of mediums that you have choices to use that maybe you didn't know before. So I'm going to start off and I have it sectioned off into eight different sections and I have eight different products I'm going to show you. So the first one I'm going to start off with is the Spectrum Noir Aqua Watercolor Marker. And I've got two colors. The colors I'm going to be testing today is um, they are blue and red. And I've chosen those colors so I can show you how they mix um, and form a third color, which would be purple. Um, so in the first square here, I'm going to move the paper over. And I'm going to sh kind of show you how to use these products. I am using watercolor paper. Um, basic watercolor paper. It's nothing special. It's whatever was cheapest at the store. Um, and two different aqua brushes. One is a fine point tip and the other is a broad flat brush. One thing I will mention about these particular products is that you have to have your pen ready. Um, your aqua brush ready. Um, because as soon as that ink hits the paper, you're losing time to spread it out. So, I will show you first with the blue. So, you see how it kind of spreads there? Um, it spreads not so well. You definitely see a, a place here. I'm going to zoom in on each of these squares as I do this. Um, you can definitely see a place where it has left itself behind here. So I'm going to show you how you can use these markers without having to worry about that. And this is what I have found in most of my coloring books. When I try to use this particular product in them, it just doesn't spread. So you can, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write on here, um, dry um, to wet wet on wet the block and um, brush and so each each one of these sections is going to have it kind of like this so I'm going to show you exactly what I mean so this is the acrylic block that I have and you can take this block and you take a color and you put it on the block and believe it or not, there is a lot of ink there. And then you can take another color and you can put it next to it. Give it just a little bit more. And then you can take, just like this, you can take that and use it just like paint. It works great. Works fantastic like that. The other thing you can do is, since you have two colors, you can mix them to form a third color. And I know it's very difficult to see on the acrylic block. However, when you get ready to use the color, you see the blue here, the red here. This is your purple. So it does work like that. The other thing you can do is you can use it wet. Um, so you can take your aqua brush and you wet down your paper. Then you take your pen and you kind of go over it like that. And you can see it's already spreading out along the edges here. And that kind of helps it to be able to be spread. The, th the fourth thing you can do you can take the end of it and you can use it um, with your brush. So this is a clean brush. I have cleaned it out. 
and then you just brush the tip of the marker with your brush. Just brush it like that. And then you can take it and paint with it like that. And that gives it a nice little wash. So that's how you can use these particular um, watercolor markers from Spectrum Noir. These are the Spectrum Noir brand. They come in packs of 12. There are four different packs, and these are from the primary pack. And then every time you use your block, just be sure, I know you can barely see that color on here, but there is a lot still on here. Just wipe it down, get that ink off of there so you can use it for another thing. Next, there are gelatos. So with gelatos, I'm going to do the test the same for each one in the same order. So you have the gelatos twist out just like chapstick, lipstick, whatever you want to call it. You take this. This is dry on dry paper. You can just put a little blob down on your page. Twist it back down in and put the lid on it. Take your brush and go over it and it becomes liquid. Now, I don't recommend using these on watercolor paper because you're going to have what you see here. A nice little area of where you lay down your color. Um, and that is from the tooth of the paper and where it has kind of dug itself in. So next, I'm going to go ahead and use it on a wet surface. So I got that nice and wet there. Take it dry and just kind of go over it a little bit. And you can see already the difference. Then you can take your brush and kind of go back over that. And you get different effects by how you're using it. Next, I'm going to show you on the acrylic block. So the first color we have is going to be red. And you just take that and put your little mark on there. Next color, blue, same blue. Right there. So what you can do, just like I did on the last test, is you can just pick up some of this color, it'll be on your brush tip, and you can paint with it. Or you can do what I do a lot and you can mix these two and it will create a third color. A not so pretty purple but it is a third color nonetheless. So you can mix these very easily, very quickly. The last way, just like the last example I showed you, is to brush it on. So you take the tip of it, you have your aqua brush, you get it wet, goes on the end of your brush, and you paint with it, just like that. So these are the gelatos. And then don't forget to wipe down your acrylic block. And these wipe down really easy. If you happen to leave your color on here um, for an extended period of time, just remember it is water-based. So all it takes is water to clean that right up. So those are the gelatos. And you can kind of see the difference here between the Spectrum Noir Aqua Markers and the Faber-Castell Gelatos. Um, differences in color, differences in consistency. Next, I've got the Derwent Ink Tense Pencils. 
And these I need to do just a little differently because I don't use these on the acrylic block. So that part's not going to be on here. Um, I'm sure you can use them on the acrylic block. I, I just don't. Um, these are such nice pencils. I, I just don't want to waste any of the ink. And that's really my only reason for not doing that. So um, we have the first part here, a blue. And I tried to pick colors that are uh, fairly consistent um, with the other colors that I've chosen. So for example, I tried to pick the colors that um, match. So the first is dry on dry. And you can see how vibrant these turn out. And they, they turn out fantastic. Next, just get a little water on your page and take your pencil. And I'm not even pushing on this. It's just the ink is coming right off. You see how that spreads really well. So that is the wet, um, dry on wet. The last one I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that these blend to show you the purple. So I'm going to get just a little bit of the red and a little bit of the blue. And my brush and I'm going to just mix these two together really quick and you see there is a third color now I know what you're thinking maybe maybe I know what you're thinking I don't know um, but you can see where these were left on the page that is because this is watercolor paper if I did this on cardstock or a smooth paper you would not see those there um, but I wanted to show you these on watercolor paper since they are water-based products um, the last example for this I'm going to show you is the actual paint on method. So you take your brush, you just paint it, and then you paint on your paper. And this happens to be my favorite method for these, um, especially on watercolor paper. Um, they turn out very smooth, very vibrant, and as you can see in comparison, the colors are just that much more vibrant. Um, Prismacolor is next. Let me grab those real quick. So first we've got the dry on dry. And I'm going to go ahead and do these down here since I know I'm going to need these down here. Kind of speed this process up a little bit. And again, I don't use these on the um, acrylic blocks. So dry on dry, you can see these work really well. A different kind of vibrancy compared to the Derwent. Um, that is because these are ink and these are watercolor, actual watercolor. Um, so that is the difference there. As far as blending goes, they blend really nice. Here is the blue. Here is the red. And we can blend these together to create a really pretty purple. So then the last two that I have to show here for this particular one is the dry on wet. And I'm not even pressing down on that paper at all. Um, and you can see it's starting to spread out here because it is on wet. I personally don't like how these work when the surface is already wet. I think it, um, I just don't think it works really well when it's already wet. I like it dry on dry and um, I like to paint with them, which I'm getting ready to show you now. Just take your nib here, get some on there, and you're able to paint with them. So I really like to paint with them. I don't use them on the acrylic block, but I'm sure you could. 
Um, they do blend very nicely on smooth paper. And I'll probably do another video that has it with on um, with a smoother paper, cardstock or, or what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this side down here. Oh, let me show you all of these real quick. So in order, we have the Spectrum Noir Aqua Markers, Gelato's Derwent Ink Tense Colored Pencils, and the Prismacolor Watercolor Pencils. So next, we have the Recollections Collection from Michaels. And these are a slick stick, so I will be using the acrylic block for these. So first I've got Dry on Dry. And then um, I'm going to do the wet, dry on wet, um, but I am going to put just a little bit down here so I can show you um, that they mix well. And these are much smoother going on than the gelatos. I would recommend these over the gelatos um, just about any day. I so wish they had more colors and I really wish they had them without the shimmer. So first, let me show you how they spread out. Very nice. And compared to the gelatos right here, you can see how much was left on the page here and how little is left on the page here. So let me go ahead and blend these two together. They don't blend very well on paper, just like a lot of the other ones don't blend very well on paper. This is the dry on wet here. And that looks okay. Next, I'm going to show you on the acrylic block here. Get some of the color on here. And then you can choose to paint with this color. Or you can choose to mix it, which is what I'm going to do. The more you mix it, the more it spreads out on this block. So the less you'll be able to actually see what the color looks like until you paint with it. So I've got plenty on my brush here. So that is the colors mixed together. And they work really well if you mix them on the acrylic block and then paint with it. And then I'm going to wipe this off. And show you the shimmer here. If you can see all the shimmer in that, um, but there is quite a bit. Next, there is the Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2. And I've just got a couple more here. First, uh, the Dry on Dry. I'll show you this. And as you can see, um, these do really well on the watercolor paper. There is absolutely no sign of where I scribbled on this page. It all blended in very seamlessly. Next, I'm going to put them on a wet surface. So we get this wet here. And then I will put this on here. And there is not much of a difference for this one. You can see it 
somewhat bleeding out here a little bit and then you can see that it does not blend in very well so again I recommend using all of these mediums on a dry to dry surface um, with the exceptions being the watercolor markers All these other mediums work best if they are dry to dry. Um, so for the acrylic block test, I'm going to color on just a few little bits of this color. And again, you can take this and you can paint with the actual color itself. Pick it up from your brush and paint with it like that. You can also blend it together. To form a nice, beautiful purple. Look at that. That's the best purple I have on here so far. I'm going to wipe off my acrylic block here real quick. And the last one that I want to show you with this is the brush on technique. You just take it and you brush. Well, let me get it to focus here. Brush your little aqua brush on there. Get some color on your brush. Got some nice color. And you can paint with it just like it is. These are my favorite water soluble pastels wax pastels um, that are out there right now. These are my top favorite. I love them. They work so well. Um, they work in almost any capacity. Um, so I would recommend, um, if you're just starting out with these, I would recommend um, trying to get your hands on the Recollections collection first to, eat, to see if you even like working with the pastel, water-soluble pastel kind of stuff. And once you do that, if you like it, I would recommend getting the Karen Dosh Neo Color 2's um, Water Soluble Wax Pastel. They are my absolute favorite, and as you can see, they blend super easy, and the colors are really vibrant. So the next little area I have is plain watercolor, and I am using the Koi pocket filled sketch box so I am picking out a blue to show you watercolor and then I'm going to wet the surface to show you the difference here Maybe a little too much wetting the surface. All aqua brushes are not created equal. Remember that. So if you buy one, you don't like it, get a different one. So you can kind of see how that's just kind of branching out there and doing its own thing. As far as watercolor goes, you use a palette to mix. So you take just a little bit of the paint Brush it on there. Clean your brush out really well. Get a little bit of a different color paint. Brush that into your color. And this has created somewhat of a, what would you call that, plum color. And now that you have that on here, you can just paint with it. So watercolor is fairly straightforward. Clean out my brush here for the next and my all-time favorite, the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Marker Set. So that are that is those. Um, next, I've got this. And remember, with the um, markers, you've got to be ready with your aqua brush or it's not going to spread around at all. It'll dry on your page before you get that chance. So this is the dry. Take it and you just kind of just 
just like that. You can use it wet. Let me get my other brush here. So there's a wet spot on the page. And I'm just putting this in here. And you can see it works much more like watercolor does. So just kind of spreading around there. Um, you can also mix these on your acrylic block as well. Take just a little bit. And a little bit of this. Blue's not coming out a whole lot. And you can just mix your color right on the acrylic block and paint with that. It's very pretty. And the other thing you can do with the markers that you can't do um, with some of the other ones um, is use it just like you would paint. You just take the tip of it. You got some on your brush. Not a lot on my brush. This had water on it. Let me, let me do the uh, red. So just brush it on there and you can paint with it. So those are my eight different watercolor mediums that I use in my coloring books and I will zoom out here to show you the overall and give you my recommendations. So I know it doesn't look like it but the recollections are really a good set for coloring books and like I said this is watercolor paper so there is a lot of tooth to this paper and the divots in the paper when you're using the wax pastels will create a little crater there and keep that pigment in that crater and it's going to be hard to get out on watercolor paper so um, just remember that as you're looking through these examples um, the Recollections would be my first choice for people who want an inexpensive um, kind of slick stick or the water-soluble wax pastel to try. They were only $7 at Michael's, and you get the set of 12. It's a really nice set, and it works great in the coloring books. When you decide you want to move up from there, I recommend um, the artist quality um, brand that I would recommend is the Neo Color 2's Karen Dosh Neo Color 2's right there. They're great. They as you can see they spread seamlessly. They they mix seamlessly. It, it's just a really nice flow of things. As far as the colored pencils go, um up here we've got the Derwent and the Prismacolor. Um these are water soluble pencils. They are not necessarily watercolor pencils. Prismacolor are watercolor. The Derwent are ink. They have ink in them, ink pencils. So they will be permanent once they dry. Um, I, I really can't say one is better than the other because it's like comparing apples to oranges. It's just not, you just can't compare the two really. Um, I can show you what they look like. I can tell you what I prefer. And I prefer the Derwent Ink Tense pencils um, just because the color is very vibrant. And they seem to spread a little bit more easy than the Prismacolor. But remember, you're working with ink here and actual watercolor here. Um, so that would be my recommendation for those. As far as markers go, no contest. The Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. They are fantastic. Love them. So this is my review for the water-based products that I have, and I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope um, it helps somebody out there to kind of figure out what they're liking and what they don't like, and maybe want to try something new. And like I said, this is watercolor paper, and if you had a flat sheet of paper, um, like cardstock, these would show up differently. And that's how most coloring books are, is, is flat. So uh, maybe I should have done one with it flat as well. And maybe I will in the future. But for now, this is what I've got and I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, until next time, happy coloring.